Welcome. Welcome to The Real with Joseph Latman. I am Joseph Latman. Uh, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to my show. Hope you guys have a good week. Happy Thursday. Uh, yeah, hope you guys have a good week like always. Um, I'm having a pretty good week, but I am going to share some things with you guys today that goes along with the topic for today's show that I've been working on in my own personal life. Um, but yeah, and I uh, hope everybody's staying warm. I know it's getting colder. <laughs> um, anybody... Uh, affected by the snow this weekend hope you guys are gonna be all right uh i know maybe you live up in like the snow belt where i am in ohio i don't live in the snow belt but um i know you're gonna be getting some snow not like buffalo though uh, uh man i know they had to move the browns bills game just got announced like an hour ago or so to uh detroit not surprised there uh this storm going into buffalo looks pretty similar to the one that hit there in 2014 so uh, be praying for everybody in Buffalo and that whole area and the region, everybody affected. Because um, it, as it's as crazy as to see when you see the image and stuff and just see that kind of amount of snowfall, it can be pretty uh, you know dangerous situation. So I uh, hope everybody up there will be okay, and so uh, we'll get through it. But today's show, like I said, uh, this topic is something that relates to what I'm going through right now. On my show last week, I gave you guys an update, kind of where I am in my journey, uh, and all that kind of stuff. But behind the scenes, when I do my own, when I've been doing my own work for myself, um, like I said, I'm still, I've come a long way, but I'm still working out some things in my own life with my journey with anxiety and uh, panic disorder and all that, agoraphobia, health, anxiety, the whole nine, and so all that stuff. Um, so this show today is focused more on, and this is kind of like a, an issue. Or I don't say an issue, but something that I see that relates to almost a lot of people with anxiety, really just a societal issue. Um, and that is, you know, when I mean when when I mean societal issue, I'm talking about just people in general, right? And so, and I this relates to me as well because I've been victim of this. What I'm about to say, as you can see by the title on the bottom right there, less focus on symptoms, more focus on the root cause or causes. And what I mean by that is um, a lot of times when you have anxiety, it's very easy to get fixated on symptoms and on feelings and emotions, right? I mean, I can relate to this. And a lot of times when you have those feelings and those emotions, uh, you feel like the jitteries in your hand, you get some feeling in your stomach. You know, anxiety gives you all kinds of weird symptoms. And, I mean, I've heard people, and I've experienced, hell, I've had it even like a tingling even like your your toes or your pinky or like it just a jittery like it just weird symptoms all over the place like that's what anxiety does um because it starts with breathing hyper you know you're breathing shallowly or not enough or properly or you know shallow breathing sometimes hyperventilating during an attack um that trickles down into tension which starts up here in your neck and it just trickles down to your body um and that's for a lot of people but a the topic I'm getting at today, though, is this is something I've learned with myself. It's very easy when you start having anxiety for a long time, you know, how long, however long you've been a sufferer for years, maybe you became aware of it recently, so now you're a couple months since you've been diagnosed or whatever it is. Um, it's very easy to start labeling everything as anxiety, every little symptom as anxiety. And you can start to, you know, you could feel jitters in your stomach. And you're heading into a situation of you're excited about something. You, you know you're you're nervous and excited about something but that doesn't mean that that's anxiety you could just be anxious there's a difference between anxious being anxious and an, having anxiety there's a difference being anxious is just kind of like that could be excitement that could be you know that could be um you know you're a little nervous but you're you're, you're okay you're not losing you know you're not in fear you're not uh you know in a panic per se and so I bring this up because like I said my own life I noticed with myself I was so focused on the anxiety for a long time focusing on okay let me stop the anxiety let me stop the anxiety and it became a day by day thing to where I would do certain exercises and do certain things where I would cope to limit my anxiety I didn't want to feel the feelings and over time I started to pretty much label everything I was feeling as negative you know, if I felt excited about something, I'd get nervous about it, like in fear, like, oh no, I have this feeling. And then that, that triggered my health anxiety because my anxiety was more revolved around, uh, well, for a while, actually, I 
was more uh, focused on my health anxiety because I thought something was wrong with me because of things I saw growing up. I, you know, I, I grew up around people that were hypochondriacs, not by their own doing because they were put in tough situations and, you know, that it's taken them years to kind of get out of that. But, you know, I picked up on that as a young kid, which I've shared multiple times in the show. And so when you have health anxiety, you're fear your health. And so when you constantly feel emotions and different, you just start labeling them all as bad. At least I did over time. I just started labeling everything as bad. And what that did was it tried to, I would try to fight off every single emotion constantly. And you're just constantly in this cycle. It's like a hamster on a wheel, but you're not going anywhere. You're just stuck. You're just running in a circle nonstop, you know, constant fight or flight mode. And so what I learned recently though, which has really helped me um, really within the last year and really even more the last six months. Um, and I've done a lot of work in the last three and a half months. Um, but what I've learned, what's helped me though, is let's look beyond the anxiety. Let's take a step further. And what I did for myself was, okay, what am I really feeling here? Why? Okay. Why do I have these emotions? Why do I have these feelings? And what I figured out for me was for a while was, for seven years, I was grieving. And what does grief cause? Grief, sadness, uh, anger can cause bitterness, depression, which I had. I had all of those. And so when I really look at it, well, oh, excuse me, when I really look at it like that, I'm kind of like, well, okay, if, do I really have anxiety? Is this like, what's, what's this thing? What's causing this anxiety? What's fueling this anxiety? Because I'm really just angry about what. And what I was angry and what I was sad about was what happened to me when I was 15 years old. That's what I was angry and I was sad about. And it, it wasn't just one thing in that time. It was multiple things that happened during that circumstance. And that it took me years, guys. It took me years. Uh, shoot. Probably up until, like I said, up until last year, 2021, to finally really put my foot down and say, okay, I need to figure this out. Because for, let's see, for six years up until that, six, seven years up, yeah, seven years rather, up until that point, uh, I was just kind of figuring out on the fly. And, and then I got in a tough situation, like I've said many times when I was 15 and uh, had an experience, went to a new school, new team, all this stuff, had a bad experience and all that. And then I ended up, you know, isolating myself away for a long time. Was stuck in my home for periods uh, where I literally couldn't even go like the end of the block. And so, uh, but during that period though, all that emotion, the anger, the bitterness, depression, the sadness, you know, all that, it just kind of just buried on me. And, but I kept feeling the symptoms of those. And so I was trying to say, oh, I got anxiety. I need to get rid of this anxiety. Well, no, I'm not trying to get rid of anxiety per se. What's causing the anxiety? And it took me up until last year and I'm still working on it. And I've done some great things recently <laughs> uh, for myself in the past six months, ever since I started this podcast. Um, and I did some things last year too, before I started this podcast that helped me lead up to that point. But ever since I really started this, like I mentioned last week, man, I've taken to a whole nother level. And so and I've done some, uh, I've done some great things for myself recently. I'll just leave it at that. Things I never thought I would do. Um, and a lot of it's expression, so, uh, but I feel a lot better and I'm a lot more, um, just feel a lot more relieved and I'm, you know, optimistic and more hopeful about things now. And so, yeah, but, uh, that's kind of what's helped me recently. I want to share that today because I feel like a lot of people get so fixated on just focusing on anxiety, but I'm like, Hey, let's, let's take a look deep. What's causing your anxiety? What's really the root cause, you know? Okay, yeah, you had some bad panic attacks, you had some experiences. A lot of times, though, yes, panic attacks, there's a difference between a panic attack and anxiety attack. An anxiety attack's more of you think you think you wear into it. It's like you're throughout the day, you wake up pissed off, you're anxious, and you just know it's coming. Let's just be honest. Like, you just know it's coming, the two o'clock hits or whatever, and you just start kind of panic. You know, you just start having that attack, you're anxious, you're freaking out. A panic attack oftentimes comes out of the blue. Like it just, you could, I, I've had that happen to me many times. I'm out doing something, I'm feeling okay. I'm all right. But then all of a sudden, bam, I just start getting this panic amongst me. 
But they don't just come out of nowhere. There's still a cookie crumb to lead up to those. There's something that triggered that or instigated that. And so I'll give another example quick before I get to my video today. I really dive deep into this from a man anxiety guy. Go subscribe. But uh, another example would be you're really thinking about something else. Like, for instance, um, like with health anxiety. Let me give you this example. So I have health anxiety, right? I could be worrying about whatever. I could feel hungry and start to and feel a little lightheaded because I need to eat or something. or You know what I mean? Or I'm tired. But I could start to overthink that. But oftentimes, what's really, for me, for I learned for myself, it's not the health anxiety per se that's feeling the anxiety. It's I'm thinking about something else deeper. And a lot of time, a lot of what I was really carrying every day, which was really the deep root cause, was that grief. You know, it was two things for me. It was grief and it was isolation. Those were my two biggest, like, those were my two biggest fears and root causes. And so those two things is what was, it became like my core beliefs. Like it was like my identity. So every day that's what I'm carrying. And those things in turn kept fueling the health anxiety. Because I got over, I, I know what the health anxiety is and I know I'm healthy. So it's like, you know, all the answers to the test to that. But what's keeping that going? And what I mean by that is when I would get symptoms of anxiety and you have health anxiety and you're having a panic attack, you think something's going to happen to you, which makes it more fearful because you have health. You know what I mean? I hope that makes sense. And because if you have health anxiety and you're feeling all these symptoms that feel like a heart attack, that feel like all these <laughs> catastrophic things, even though nothing's wrong with you, you're just body's wrapped normally to stress, uh, you know, it's going to make you think something's wrong you're gonna start focusing on the health anxiety and then your health but a lot of times for me what's causing my anxiety every day was those deeper rooted issues i was carrying around burdens and weights every single day and these are things i'm still working through now but i've come a long way but at least i know now how to identify them see i didn't know this stuff back back then back then when it all started like the first four or five years for me really until i started listening to dennis's podcast and things kind of slowed down in my life uh really slowed down for a period um up until that point i was just more you know trying to get by cope and and, and manage you know just and just like this is my life and i'm just gonna manage it and i just struggle and i just wore that like i just sometimes you struggle but i'll just get through it but the longer you do that the, the worse you're gonna get because I'm honestly maybe not the worst you can get worse I don't want, I mean you can get worse but you're not really getting better though yeah you might feel good here and there but do you constantly want this to come back around constantly do you constantly want to live in this cycle all the time because I don't I didn't because you know what that cycle was for me kept me right where I was and where I was, this wasn't what I truly wanted to do on the inside. That wasn't a fulfilling life. I wasn't fulfilling God's purpose for me. I was living, in, allowing, you're allowing fear basically to dictate and control everything you do still. Think of that. You're just allowing your fear to dictate everything you do. And what is fear? And this was taught to me at a young age. Break down the word fear. F is for false. E is for evidence. A is for appearing. R is for real false evidence appearing real that's what fear is that's how i view fear because a lot of my anxieties and fears were illusions they didn't apply to me they were other people's beliefs and other people's opinions and just stuff i saw out in the external world that didn't apply to me it doesn't apply to me right and so and this goes back to when you were a kid and so that's why focusing on the root causes and digging deep that's why you always talk about your inner child inner wounded child investigate that it's okay put your investigative cap on get a pen and paper start writing things down start really digging deep and so yeah but for a while that's that's what i did and that but again you're just living in fear you know you're, you're just you're lying fear to control you still you're still handcuffed don't you want to be fully free that's how God designed you. That's how God wants you to live. If God doesn't want us to live in this handicapped world, but you should want that for yourself either. 
Even if you don't believe in God. Uh, I mean, do you want, is that kind of life you want to live? Because you don't have to live like that. I know our world, people, things in our world tell us we have to deal with it and suck it up and live like that. Guess what? You don't. That's all bullshit. You can be free. You can truly do the things you want to do. You really can. I'm not saying you can go dunk a basketball because you're, you know, if you're 5'7". seven. But if you have a belief about something, like a strong belief, a real, you know, I want to do this. I, I'm in this career right now, but I really want to do this one day. Whatever that is. Do it. You know, uh, I had a passion doing this kind of work for a long time. But I never really, it was just an idea. But my belief was low. But this is what I truly wanted to do was something like this one day. And then as the closer I got, I said, hey, you know what? It is more obtainable. And I saw people out there. I started uh, having more role models. I would pay attention to people that were doing the same kind of work I was doing. And they showed me the blueprint on how to do it. You know, looking up people. It's like good motivation for yourself. Positive feet, but it's helpful too. But that's the kind of stuff you start to surround yourself with and, and you start to, you know, you just, you like naturally start to absorb to good things, natural things, things that are healthy for you. When you start to get rid of those handcuffs and really allow yourself to truly be who you want to be and put God in the center of it. And so I hope this all makes sense. Kind of the main topic, what I'm going at today. I got a quick video, six, six, seven minutes, I believe. My man Dennis, the anxiety guy, that's really going to dive deep into this. Um, he's going to talk about taking our focus off the bodily symptoms. He's going to show some, you know, he'll give his in, his analysis, expert analysis, like he always does, and share some of his tips or uh, not really tips, but just some of his from his own experience, but also, you know, what he's observed from other people. Um, you know, that's where all his information comes from. Really, it's just uh, his own experience and. He's worked with so many people, thousands of people. And so uh, you're getting great advice every time you listen to Dennis. And I hope you guys subscribe to his channel and follow him on social media. If you need any questions or you can always hit me up. He'll also You can also hit him up, too, and he'll reply to you um, no matter what your circumstance is. We'd love to help. And so uh, without further ado, though, today's video from my man, the anxiety guy, it's called Direction. Always fixate on your body. And that's the title of the video here. Uh, it says, always fix on your body, question mark. So he's kind of going to show how to redirect your focus, rather, your, your your focus from your body, from the symptoms and everything, how to redirect it more towards something that's more helpful, how to really get you on the right path towards figuring this out and slowing things down. And so, uh, yeah, I'm just going to stop talking. Without further ado, my man Dennis, the anxiety guy. Warrior, welcome to day five of 29 days of the anxiety guy. Today, we are talking about being fixated on your body and the things that you must understand now. Let's go. Can we find it? Let's go. My friends, welcome to day five of 29 days of the anxiety guy. That's right. One video every single day in the month of February 2020. Get your questions in in the comments section. I may use it for future videos. Now, today's question comes from Karen something or other. I love the name. And Karen something or other asks, Dennis, how do we distinguish between being conscious of our physiology and being aware of what our body is doing during the day versus being fixated on our body during the day? I kind of understand where this is going. There's a difference between being fixated on every bodily sensation and many times in an anxiety suffers life, there is a deep sense of distrust within themselves and their bodies. So they go through the cycle of what I call the standing guard cycle. 
The standing guard cycle says, hey, you cannot let up for a moment because if you let up and you don't pay attention to everything that your body is doing, every physical sensation, every emotion, then the worst could show up. That's kind of the feeling or the Now, pay attention to what he said right there. That's a very key point. Because I went through that. When you start to not focus, you shift your focus on more different things besides your symptoms, your inner child, your subconscious is naturally going to say, hey, hey, like, hello, why are you not focusing on us? Because you feel like, at least I feel like, and for a lot of people that have gone through this, when you give it less focus and you let go of it, that's like, to the inner child, that's like death. That's like, you know what I mean? That's like, it's like dying to the subconscious mind, to the fear, to the anxiety itself. Because it feels like if you let go, it's not going to maintain what it deems as, quote, keeping your survival. And I hope that makes sense. Or keeping your reputation, maintaining your, whatever it's trying to maintain X, whatever X is, right? And so that's a very key point there because I'll meet my grapes too at the same time. Anywho. Uh, because that's a very key point there because uh, you're going to feel resistance at first. You're going to feel that resistance from your subconscious mind, but that's okay. Don't fear the resistance. Don't fear that uncertainty with inside of you. Embrace it because the opposite of that is freedom. Getting the opposite of that, you know, getting the other side of that is true freedom. That's where you want to be. And so it's only temporary, but once you understand what that is, you can make peace with it and start to embrace it and get, you know, it's almost like, Embrace it. Give it a hug. Say, hey, how are you? Talk to it, even. You can talk to your inner child and read, guide it, and redirect it. Uh, another tool, real quick, I'll give you before I get back to the video, is you know, when you start to get those illusions, those little thoughts in your head throughout the day, as you start to do this, and uh, you, you can almost like, um, I learned this from Dennis, you can almost, you get. let's say you get a voice in your head like, oh, you're going to have a panic attack, or, or oh, you're, this, you know, we're going to die, or you know, this is it, this is the one, or we can't do this for our reputation. When you get that thought or voice in your head, play that voice in your head or say it out loud in a silly tone, almost like Daffy Duck. Imagine saying that fear in like Daffy Duck or, you know, Mickey Mouse's voice. I'm just using an example. Or whatever funny voice, maybe a, a character from a movie you like. And say it in that person's voice, because when you say it like that, the more you do that, you, you, you're almost telling it it's not real. You're taking the power away from it, right? And so that's another tool, another skill set you can use throughout the day. And so, but that's a very key point there. I wanted to stop there because uh, you're going to, that's somewhat goes along the resistance and letting go. But uh, yeah, hope you guys learned something there. Uh, let's get back to the video. The sense that an anxiety sufferer has in the background. So, what do they do? They pay full attention to everything that their body is doing. And when you do this, what happens is you deplete yourself. You deplete yourself emotionally, you deplete yourself physically. It's tiring and you deplete yourself mentally. You no longer have charge or control over your thinking processes. You are a victim. You have succumbed to your unconscious reactions to what your body may be going through. So number one thing to understand is we must start building trust in your body. Number two is your body is most likely under constant constriction due to excess worry causing pain and discomfort. This excess worry is habitual. It's a habit for goodness sakes. And this habit may have been brought on by your authority figures, mom and dad, things that you saw from the past, and you believed consciously and unconsciously that this is who you are. I'm just a worrier, right? A lot of people say that. You know, I go about my day, I'll meet someone new, and they go, yeah, you know, I, I worry about everything. And 
they've got a certain sense of pride within that. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm prideful of worrying about everything. You shouldn't be prideful of worrying about everything. You're just... Sorry about that. Now, again, notice what I said earlier. Let me get on screen. Notice what I said earlier. Exactly what he, what he just said is what I said earlier, which is you carry this around like it's your identity. Like, I am an anxiety sufferer. Like, this is who I am. Yes, you might be an anxiety sufferer, but you don't want to identify with that. You don't want to carry that around. You know what I mean? I, I don't want to be anxiety the rest of my life. I want to be an anxiety overcomer. Like, I defeated anxiety. I kicked anxiety in the ass. And I went back and showed people how to do this, what helped me and help other people overcome it. That's empowerment. Not waking up every day and allowing that fear to control you for the rest of your life and, and, and you know, not living out your goals, your dreams. And yeah, you might do some things, but if you want to get towards the end of your life and start looking back and having regret, you know, I didn't because I got tired of that feeling of grief and what, all the things that went with it because it was almost like a, like a regret in a way I was feeling, even though I didn't really do anything wrong. I didn't, it wasn't, none of it was my fault. It was nobody's fault. It just, you know, it was the circumstances that have, you know, led to that. But you still could look back at certain things. And I was only, you know, in my early twenties, late teens, looking back at something when I was 15 years old saying, damn, like, and then especially once I got past high school, I was like, damn, I never, get to do anything that I wanted to do. And you could sit there and kind of dwell on that. And so, and you start, like, again, like you said, and you just start to become like this identity and everyone around you starts to just naturally out of care, not blaming it, but they start to, everyone around you just labels you as a, you're just, a, just this anxiety person. You're just a struggle. You struggle with it and uh, just try to get by and manage it and, you know, hope to do better. You got, you could do better for yourself than that. I hope you know that. And so, and I mean that in a very, you know, I'm saying this to try to help you guys. Like, hey, like, because again, guys, this applied to me too. I've been there, but guess what? You, there is another way. There is another side. You just gotta be willing to embrace that uncertainty, embrace that different uh, point of view, maybe a different direction, maybe you never thought of. You know, a different kind of flavor, a different kind of, you know, because this isn't really taught in our society. You know, we're, we're taught we're very we're taught very well how to suppress, <laughs> cope, get by, and manage and deal with it. That's what we're taught. We're taught that very well, all the time. And our advertisements, you can be going down the road, you can see an advertisement that could trigger. It's we're surrounded by this. So again, understand all that. Be honest with yourself. Because you're not going to be honest with yourself. I mean, you're not going to get anywhere. You could just keep trying to get by and trying to maintain some. And I say this all the time. This will, I'll get back to the video after this. Have you associated so much pain? Have you associated enough pain yet? Or sadness, whatever. Have you associated enough pain, sadness, regret, whatever it is, with whatever you're dealing with what's really causing your anxiety are you are, are you just are you uh, forget the exact are you really just sick and tired of living with anxiety are you sick and tired of being sick and tired because if you are now's the time don't wait anymore i don't care what age you are you could be 23 you could be 55 you could be 85 i don't care you could change at any age if anybody says otherwise they're full of shit just keep it 100 I've seen people, the man right there on the screen, he's seen many miracles at any age. And I've seen him myself. Seen him now. See him all the time. We just don't hear about him as much, but they're out there and it can happen to you. But the choice is yours. But you got to first be honest with yourself and really, you feel like you really deserve is your self worth. You feel like, you know, I really do deserve to do this. You know, that is something I want to do. I do want to say this to that person. I do want to do X. And it doesn't mean you do it right away, but you can work your way towards that. And eventually you can do it. Whatever that is. Whatever you want to be in life. And so, again, the choice is yours. 
You got to be honest with yourself, like I said, but also understand the cycle that you're in. Understand what you're surrounded by and understand, am I carrying around this label every day? Am I making this who I am? Is this my, I'm, I've made, have I made this subconsciously my core belief? Have others made me, have other people around me who may love me and they, maybe they do love you. We're not mad at them, but if other people around me kind of made me feel like I had to carry this and that this is who I am. I was just thrown into this. And that could be anything. Like, forget anxiety. That could be, you can be thrown into, hell, I, I grew up a lot around, I've seen a lot of kids growing up I went to school with, even still now to this day, that they've had a lot of pressure put on them growing up, a lot of expectations and standards. They live in, you know, they live in uh, type of environments and are always around people that are constantly putting pressure and standards on them. And they, they feel like they have to live up to a certain image and, that's pressure. You know, that's pressure. You're putting, you're putting pressure on yourself, but you're lying. Other people are putting pressure on you as well. You didn't really ask for, we're being honest. And so again, make the choice today. <laughs> I'm going to keep stress. Make the choice today. Start right now and start taking these steps. And what he's been saying, he's going to keep going on more. And like I said, just start being honest with yourself. And so, uh, yeah, I went on a little longer than I thought there, but that's okay. Because that was a very key point. Uh, but I'm going to finish out the rest of this video, and then we'll close out. I didn't realize my mic was even on there. <sighs> I clicked the wrong button, and then I took the video off the screen. I'm sitting there talking. I, I, you know what? I, the hell with it. At least the message was good. All right. <laughs> Let's just get back to the video. Basically, living a more limited existence in life. It's not good. So you must understand that this worrying habit is causing further constriction in your body, causing you to further misinterpret what your body is doing, causing more emotional distress. So what's the answer? The answer and the key is to consciously direct your body versus unconsciously falling victim to and acting on your fearful thoughts. There's a big difference between consciously guiding your body, your mind, your system, and unconsciously falling victim to your ideas and the feelings in your body. There's a big difference here. One, you're taking charge, and the other one, your unconsciousness is taking charge. The majority of people today live in a zombie-like state, right? They feel something they think in line with it, they act in line with it over and over and over again. Rarely do they say, hey, I'm going to taste my food this time. Hey, I'm going to focus on directing my breathing to my stomach area rather than breathe unconsciously through my chest. Or, hey, I'm really going to pay attention to how fast I drive in this moment. Warrior, I want you starting today to consciously direct your body rather than allow your unconsciousness to direct it for you. I don't want you to be a victim to what you're feeling. I don't want you to succumb to an emotion. You must question every thought that you have, as many thoughts as possible, especially the negative ones. You must question your feelings because many times your feelings are just an unconscious response to this present situation or an imagined future one. Learn how to question yourself and direct your body consciously. This is what I'm going to be focusing on today with a clear intention rather than be a victim to it. I love you from the bottom of my heart. Remember that you are more than anxiety. And if you have any other questions on any of my programs, head on over to this website right here. See you in the next video.
And uh, another great video by my man, the Anxiety Guy. Uh, again, uh, everything he said there is kind of what I've been talking about today, and he gave a little more analysis into it. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys really took something away from this message today because I feel like this is a great starting point for wherever you are in your journey, or on your journey, whatever you're going through. And, uh, you know, before I get out of here, though, I want to share a tool that I use that I learned from my uh, therapist, my counselor, rather, um, within the last year. And it's like a spider web thing, we call it. And so let's say, for instance, I deal with grief. So I'd write grief on a piece of paper and circle it. And then you take grief and you would branch out to different emotions. So I would say anger. Right. So let's say I do anger. And let's say sadness. So I write sadness. Okay. So what am I angry and am I sad about? And you see how we take the next layer off of that? So what am I angry about? And I could say I'm angry to what happened to me when I was 15. This is what I learned for myself. 15 year old experience. Right. And then we say, okay, 15 year old experience. What happened in that experience? And then you keep branching off, and I'd write down in detail how I felt. And was the anger directed towards anyone? I'd write down their names. Uh, and they would say sadness. What am I sad about? And then you just keep, you know, saying you go to each one. And so, like I said, so I put anger, then I put the next era. What am I angry about? 15 year old experience. What am I angry about that experience, rather, is what it should have said. I'm angry that I didn't get to do X, Y, and Z, or this happened to me. Is that anger direct towards anything? And then you just, but you, I hope you guys see what I'm saying in this exercise. You just keep branching off more and more and more and more until you feel like you've gone far enough. And so you're really diving deep into the grief you're feeling. You're dissecting it and you're getting to the root cause. You're, you're getting to the base layer. And the more you do that, like he said at the end of his video, excuse me, and if you go on his channel, that's one way you can do it. Because when you start to identify it and you, you have more clarity on what you're, what you're really feeling, that gives you more uh, power. And the more power you have, the more trust you build within yourself. Like you said in the video, trust is key. And so, but also that's one tool you can use to really dissect. Another one could be once you identify these things, these experiences rather, that are really caused what, how you're feeling, you start to reframe them. If you're looking for a reframing playlist, go to Dennis's channel. Actually, I'll put it in the, I'll put it in the uh, uh, description below his playlist on his channel. Find which one works for you. And you just do those reframing playlists, whatever one you like. Pick one you like that you feel like goes with you. And he's got like 10 different ones. <laughs> and uh, excuse me. And you just do that rep repetition. You do it every day almost, pretty much. Do it every day for how many, ex maybe try for 10 days and see how you feel. And journal too. Write down how you feel beginning of that 10 days or two weeks whatever and then write down how you feel in the middle of it and then write down how you feel about the experience after and that's what you're writing down how do i how, when i think of that experience how do i still view it from the beginning of the two weeks or whatever it is that i start doing the reframing daily in the middle and in the end how do i feel about it and usually towards the end, you look back in that experience, and you have a lot more clarity about it, you understand what it is, but the, it's gone. And also, you might learn about some things you maybe you need to do as well. Maybe there's some people you need to address something to. And some of those reframing playlists he has on there, you do that imaginatively, or maybe you could do it in, in person too. You could build up to do something in person. Maybe you write something to somebody or say something to somebody you've been trying to say them for years. And so, but again, it's it's taking you step by step to being more ultimately free of that. What's the, for me, what was the key? The grief. We're becoming, we're unchaining ourselves from that grief. That's what's really causing all the, well, I'm just using an example. Whatever's causing your anxiety, causing you to feel that stress every day, we're taking that root cause, we're facing it head on. We're, we're really challenging and addressing it and experiences that went into that. And so... Uh, yeah, I hope that helps you guys. I hope that again the spider web technique I call we call it. Um, you know, write write down whatever you're feeling. If you're feeling, if you're have fear of 
What's one nowadays? A big one nowadays in our site. Rejection. Maybe that's your, your biggest fear is rejection or pressure. And just write it down a piece of paper, circle it, and then start to really, what's the emotion? Start off with the emotions. What are you feeling? And then what's the, why do I, like I said, for me, anger. What's that anger from? What do you think that, what do you think, who, or who caused that anger? What experience? What's causing the anger? And you keep branching off. And the more you go, you're like an invest, you put on your investigative cap. But you got to be honest with yourself too, like I said earlier. And so, uh, yeah, I hope that helps you guys. I hope if some of you guys use that toolkit or that skill set, the spider web thing, uh, please let me know. Maybe you can message me online or leave a comment below. Let Share your uh, progress with it and what you think about it. I would love to hear you guys' feedback on it. I know it really helped me. Uh, and I continue to use that still in some other areas of my life. And so, uh, yeah. Woo. I'm a lot of breath, guys. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes when you talk for a long time, you can just start to get dry, <laughs> like a cotton mouth, start to get a little tired. But it's all good because the message today was great. And I hope this message today really uh, helps one of you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video from me and the anxiety guy. Um, yeah. And looking forward to watching the game this weekend. Uh, even though, oh boy, now they're playing in a dome in Detroit. Now it should be a home game for the Browns, but as bad as that defense has looked, now they're playing inside. And what if the Bills come out and put a 40 piece on us? Oh, oh boy. I don't know, guys. I'm just not. That defense is so. But I've already talked about that in my other. I've talked about that in my Browns post game. <laughs> we ain't talk about that today. But looking forward to watching that this weekend. Uh, like I said, hope everybody praying for Buffalo, the city, in that area. Hope everybody gets by okay. It's uh, still an insane amount of snow. <laughs> That's going to be crazy to see. Um, but again, hope everybody's gonna be okay. And uh, what else? Oh, the Cavs. Yeah, lost five in a row. Um, not panicking though about the Cavs. I still still high. I think they'll be a top four seed in the East. I think, like I said earlier, just kind of going through a little, you know, little uh, young team woes right now, trying to figure out how to learn some things and all that, learning how to win consistently. But uh, hopefully, they get a win in their next game. I don't know when their next game is. They lost Milwaukee last night. Uh, but, um, yeah, that's all I got to say for you guys today. Hope you guys enjoyed the message, like I said, and, uh, I'll leave you this, you know, I've been using, like I said, I'm going through the same exact thing today that I talked about in my own life. And so feel free to hit me up online if you need someone to talk to, um, about maybe certain the tools and maybe whatever, more clarity about things, hit me up or Dennis or anyone up, find someone to talk to, you know, I really and maybe you don't want to talk right away, but start writing down on a piece of paper. Say it out loud by yourself when no one's home or no one's around. And just really slowly start to take those steps. Start to, you know, eventually talk to somebody. It's okay to talk to people. There was a lot of things I was afraid to tell anybody for a long time. And now I, I got to the point where I just op talk about it openly and freely. Let me tell you, it's the greatest feeling there is. Because you don't feel like you have to hide. You don't feel like you have to suppress. You don't feel like you gotta like try to manage this record, this image or any of that. That's all a bunch of crock. You can start to become comfortable in your own skin and who you truly want to be. But again, I had to get to a point where I associated a pain with where I was to get to that point. And so uh, I hope you guys do the same and helping yourself. And like I said, if you need anybody or someone to talk to, uh, feel free to hit me up. And uh, my contact information is below in the bot in the description box. And so, uh, yeah, that's all I got for you guys today. Like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. And um, I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm out of here. Gone.